he's okay with, with what I am. This is fine. Um, and, and honestly, if he told me that he just wasn't okay with it, he couldn't handle it, um, I'm okay. It's, that's his business. He doesn't have to accept what I am. He can you know, not want to be with me. That's fine. I, I have no issue with that. His loss. Yeah. The problem I have with the whole thing, and, and this is something, you know, we talked about this for a long time, and I, I really did a lot of thinking about this and trying to figure out what, the, basically what is wrong with this picture kind of a thing. Because what he told me, when we, we sat down and had coffee, and what he told me was that he was okay with what I am and that he was very attracted to me. Okay. But he said, he said, you, li- you and I live in different worlds. He said, said that, um, that I, referring to me, um, live in this sort of activist um, GLBT community world. It's like, okay, I, to a degree I do. Um, I, live, <coughs> I live in the world at large, but, but, but okay, uh, you know, I, this is sort of my community, and, um, and that's fine. And he said that he lives in this sort of white-collar, starchy white-collar world, his friends and coworkers and family and all this. And he said, these worlds can never meet. He said, this is what he said to me, these worlds can never meet. He said, the people that I, that, you know, my family and friends and, and colleagues would not accept this. And my, my gut reaction initially was, okay, you're a gutless worm. Um, <laughs> Well, it's, you know, like it's, it's true, but, but you know, it, thinking, it, he said to me, and what he said to me was, I didn't say this to him, I was being kind, what he said to me was that he would still like to have a relationship with me, he said he was, would be happy to be my friend, but he would still like to have a relationship with me, um, but our two worlds could never meet, and that's the thing that so bothers me about that. You know, I certainly have no intention of having anything to do with them. But, but the thing that bothers me about that, I've thought about this and thought about this and thought about this, and the thing that bothers me about this so much is that this man was willing to have a relationship with me. Um, read sex, probably. This man wanted to be with me, but I could never meet his friends or his colleagues or his family. It's like... Okay, so so you're willing to be with me, but I'll always have to go in through the back door. I can never sit with you in a restaurant. I can't be seen with you in public. And it's like, and and the more I think about that, it's like, this man looked at me as some kind of a lesser person, a second-class citizen. I mean, the days there were, you know, maybe I should ride on the back of the bus. You know, the, I thought the days of this were gone. But this man, and this is an educated man, and I think a good man, and a, a nice man, but I really think that he honestly believes that somehow I am a lesser person because I'm good enough to sleep with, but not good enough to recognize in public. Um, he looked at me as a, as a second-class person. He was willing to come into your world to be with you and then go home to his. Yeah. Because his world would never accept you, but yeah. he would. I mean, this is, this is bias, and, and it, it, I think the thing that bothers me so much about this is that of where it came from. A sort of a, an educated um, man, a, a bright man, an educated man, and I didn't expect it from him. You know, I could, ha- I, I could absolutely handle if he couldn't handle it, if it was him that could not handle this. I can accept that. That's fine. I, you know, I don't, I don't, not everybody can handle what I am, and I'm okay with that. But, and maybe that whole thing was just an excuse. But the, on the other hand, he wanted to still be with me, so I don't think... Uh, well, uh, I don't know. Uh, from, from what you say, I, I mean, the first impression that I get was actually, is actually that he is just using that, his external um, cir- circumstance, as an excuse. Yeah. Because he really, he can't deal with you, and he can't bring himself to say that. So he's saying, uh, okay, I mean, I, I don't, I don't yeah. want to, uh, you know, bring that, forward the idea that, no, he's not, ju- he's just not that into you. But it, it sounds like he could be using that as, uh, yeah. his, you know, his, you know, family and friends and our worlds will never meet. Yeah. You know, that's a, that's years. kind of a bunch of hogwash, it's really. Uh, and, rationalization. And, and sure. that, right. 
And I, I thought, I kind of thought that too, and that may be the case. But the, the, it just, the whole thing just, there was something about it. We talked about it for yeah. at length because there was something <laughs> about it that just was nagging at me. This, was just, this is wrong. There's just something wrong about this. Yeah. Right. It's, it stinks, and which is why sort of my intuition, you know, says he's just using this as a gambit to get you to, um, to skirt around his own... Uh, probably very conflicted feelings about sure. being attracted to you and then finding out that you know you were something different than whatever he had imagined. Yeah, it, it might be a convenient way to compartmentalize what he feels. Sure. That it's it's, right. it's okay for him to come and play in your sandbox. But <laughs> but, but it's an interesting but, way of putting it. But, yeah. but, but mom and dad don't want him to drag, don't want don't want him to drag any sand into the house. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I like that. He'll be tracking dirt across oh. the floor. Uh, well, I, 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 ironically, I heard today um, there, there was some talk about um, about uh, the black community and w whether or not they're in support of the GLBT, you know, same-sex marriage issues. And w one of the things that one of the pastors of a black church had said was that um, people keep people keep relating the GLBT rights issues um, to to civil rights issues. And, and yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And the argument was, you know, gay people never had to ride on the back of the bus. They never had to go in through uh, a different door. Uh, and, and, yeah. and to the extent that there are no signs up nowadays, that, that it's not done as openly, he's right. Enough progress has been made due to the existing civil rights successes that people are not going to be that obvious and, and that, you know, um, terrible about it. Right. Instead, you, we, we find, exam frankly, I do believe this is an example of um, more subtle ways in which the same kind of segregation sure. happens, the same kind of, in, as you said in his mind, second-class citizenship yeah. gets implemented in a more savvy culture. Right. Except that actually, it's it, it you can call it it's more savvy or subtle, or perhaps it's just more insidious. Yeah. You know, yeah. whenever anything is repressed, you know, it always goes underground and it always comes back in some other form. Right. Yeah. It's interesting, and, and you know, it's, this is not the first time this has happened to me. I have I have met a great number of men, who who told me flat out, and at least they were honest about it, mm -hmm. that they would like to sleep with me. But that I would, they would never, you know, I, I would never go home to meet their mother. Right. And of course, I basically told every one of them to kiss my ass, um, because Which they I have way to do. I have, yeah, <laughs> be, because I have, you know. But not your mother's. The truth yes. is, the truth is, I have way too much self-respect to go down that road. And um, and 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 you know, people, guys, um, and, and I'm not making a, a generalization here, but there are a number of guys out there that are attracted to people like me that, that they. They see the word, you know, transsexual, and it's like, oh, I think they, they see the sex part in that, and they think that um, that you're easy or something, and that you're willing, and it's like, you know, I'm a person, I'm a woman, just like every other one. Or as as we talked about, desperate, yeah. that you're such a they such, such a de yes. segregated section of society that you'd be willing to accept it under yeah, any conditions. Yeah, right. That you're desperate, and guess what? You know what? That just isn't the case. It, it really isn't. Um, well, from. Uh, for a, a lot of trans folk that I have known up until very recently, uh, the there was a lot of body issues are, and yeah. a lot of trans folk that I've you know read you know about or their their readings or had contact with and know their personal stories have told me that for many years, particularly like in the in the trans men segment of the population, that there was such a, a 